Alex Hansery here, coming to you May 27th, 2016. This is actually part two of my video relating to MGTOW and the off-grid movement. And I'm not going to pull my punches. You know, there are some deeper concepts that I'm going to get into in this video after my introduction. But ultimately, for the man on the spiritual path, living off the grid or living in nature, living away from the temptations of the larger city, these, seem, th these themes tend to go hand in hand and we can see this throughout history. We could see specific reasons why Buddhist monks, for example, have lived in isolation, spending their time on meditation, spending their time on philosophy, spending their time on themselves, spending their time on martial arts and physical fitness, and not being in situations to where their energy or their field is being drained. And so, coming from Portland, I have a lot of experience living in a city where the focus is on sex, the focus is on drink this beer, here's this silhouette of the woman without a head. And I was pointing this stuff out years ago, look at what's going on around us in the society. Constantly look at the booty, chase the ass, chase the woman, worship the woman as a goddess we see women replacing men in the workplace and then there's that emotional response which just adds to the emotional vampirism in these cities as a man goes through pain as he's thrown out in the street as he's living in the street as he's looking at this discrimination this manufactured uh, gender war how it's infected the workplace. There's no real equality. It's musical chairs. It's man versus woman. It's woman versus man. This creates pain in the heart of man and woman. And so thus the urban environments are toxic. It's about getting out of those environments and being in a state of peace, being in a state of bliss because we are affected by our environments. That is the truth. Make no mistake about that. Understand this truth and don't be ran over by it. Don't be ran over by your environment. And that is about conscious living. Living in the environment that is right for us because it's good for us, good for our health. Not living in an environment that we're hypnotized to think that we need to be in, that we need that energy, that we need that place, that we need those people. So a man truly on the spiritual path has his lust under control. He's not going to be living somewhere it's just simply because there's more potential sex partners. He's not going to be a slave to his physical desires. We are human. We have certain feelings. Lust is a part of being human. Being a slave is also a part of the human experience. It's very intertwined, just like lust. How can our lust lead us to an enslaved environment? How many men should be probably leaving the girlfriend that we're with right now because of how they're actually being treated? In their relationship, they may find themselves to be someone's bitch. In today's day and age, where some people believe that the way that you bring equality to the world is to dominate yourself is to control and make someone else your slave. Yeah, that's how we bring balance to the force. That is not how we bring balance to the life force. To the real world earth politics. That's not how we have an individual shift in consciousness. If man realizes that the women in his environment, in his day and age, in his civilization, view men like him as threatening, whether it be their ideas, their racial background. And by the way, you could be a white guy leaving white society. This is not just about minorities. Because you find yourself goal-oriented, intelligent, heartfelt, empathetic, loving, and you're looking at the peers in your society. It's not a racial thing. It's an energetic thing. So this affects all men that are going through this experience. And I would say in particular for those on the spiritual path that find themselves rejected by society 
because they're doing the right thing. Of course, there are other men in today's society. They may play video games all day. They may have other psychological ailments and they may consider themselves MGTOW and they just want to blame women for not wanting to have sex with them without realizing that maybe there's absolutely nothing attractive about them, their character, or their intelligence. And maybe that's actually where they should start with being proud of who they actually are and then go to the next level. I know that I'm proud of who I am and I know that I am doing the right thing. And I know that I am putting out information that is actually helping humanity on some level. And I know that that is the most important thing and that's what I need to focus on, continuing to do that, not what I think I'm entitled to. Uh, there are many, both male and female, philosophers and spiritual teachers and uh, other uh, people throughout history that have spent much of their life alone because they were on a level that other people couldn't understand or want to understand or were attracted to. It didn't mean that there was nothing important about what they were saying or who they were. It was that for their day and age and what they were saying or what they represented uh, and, and who knows other factors could be involved. You know, it's like when we're living in this type of a controlled matrix, isn't it interesting how so many good men and good women have been treated like shit by other men and women in mass consciousness. Notice also how what I'm saying is very in contrast to the mainstream New Age movement of the world ascending by this point in time. And there are so, still female commentators and personalities on the internet that are calling it as, this is it. This is the collective shift in consciousness. We've already crossed the threshold, they just haven't let us know yet. And there's David Icke saying that 2016 is the year of the great enlightenment. Oh, is it, okay, is it, is it going to be happening this week or next week, David Icke? There, we're always in a state of shift and change. For people trying to attribute it to certain dates and time periods, simply to meet their own worldview, that's something else. And that's a big, strong cup of bullshit. But it's what their belief system and the belief systems of others have allowed. But why have they not taken into their belief systems the reality of the situation? In the last few years, we've seen romantic energy take a major dive. And I've said these dates before, the post-2009, 2010, 2011 time period are marked by a lot of unrest romantically between human beings. I think this can be seen, and I think there are forces of darkness that, that are working to enhance the divide between the masculine and the feminine, and, and that also means within ourselves, not just with someone else, but within ourselves, those masculine and feminine attributes. I see the feminine suppressed in the women. I see the masculine suppressed in the men. And I see in some cases how they want the men feminine and how they want the women masculine. And in some cases how they want the men and women robotic and just simply obeying orders and without feeling and carrying out the agenda and making life difficult for the other human beings that aren't going along to get along. So knowing that our environment can influence our behavior and there are other people out there that our bodies may say, yes, I want to procreate with that. I want to dance with that. I want to connect and love that. You may think you're in love because your body is going bing, 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 yeah, 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 cuckoo, cuckoo. Boing, 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 I mean, your body's chemistry is going, love, love, love. Be you male, be you female. How do you know whether or not that's love? How do you know that that's not another dark cupid love bite? Archon deception to manipulate your turn-ons and turn-offs. I've mentioned it before. It's, it's as if some people are turned on by things that are bad for them. Ooh, candy. Ooh, this is our food. Ooh, chocolate chip cookie dough. Raw. Lots of it. 
and then turned off by the things that are good for us. Ah, oh, to hell with that green, green chlorophyll and that quinoa. How do you say that quinoa? <laughs> it's like there's certain things that are actually good for us that we may be turned off by because of some little thing in our head. We can see it with foods. We can see it relationships. A woman could look, I'm just going to say it straight, could look at a certain guy. Oh, he lives a certain way. He must be a bum. How the fuck do you know that? And how the fuck do you know that that person is probably not the best lover that you've ever had in your life? And I'm just saying in a hypothetical situation where people think that they can analyze someone or even guess their dick size, for example, just to be blunt, or how much money they actually have in their bank. Oh, just because he looks like he has $100 in his bank account? That doesn't mean that yada, yada, yada. And I know that I've been misread. And I've also known that the women that I've given my affection and love to in spirit were actually wrong for me. I know that I've made serious errors in judgment myself. I think I've used a lot more discretion in recent years. And in hindsight, as, as we bring, again, and this isn't all about me, but my personal experiences have educated me. The period in my life when there were, I wouldn't say the term women throwing themselves at me, but there were a few that you could say did. And it was when I was performing outside the box TV, and it was when I was live, and it wasn't always sexual. In some cases, it was uh, the beginning of an energy vampirism encounter, like uh, a woman uh, that I was fond of that lived in Beaverton that would come to my meetings. She would throw sexual energy at me, uh, but it was only done to get me to feed her energy through that attraction, which was strong and powerful like a spark. It actually continued for a few years after I left Portland until I realized what was taking place and how the person was manipulating me, manipulating me, and how the, the positive things that I saw in her were really delusions that I chose to participate in because I liked seeing her in a positive goddess-like way. And I repeated this in a number of my uh, experiences with a few women where because maybe, you know, she, she seemed to be the goddess to me and she seemed to be divine and she seemed to be on the spiritual path and I wanted to have that experience. And there was some physical pleasure between us. And I'm thinking with, you know, the first person that for a while I said I ever really loved. It was simulated. And it was simulated within me to give her my energy. And this can happen to you whether you're male or female. And it can really seem like it was love at the time. Only to realize that, again, it was a simulation that was simulating a certain emotion, a certain emotion within us, only to be followed by other certain emotions within us, like heartbreak, like a sense of failure. We could fast forward to now 2010, 2011, the content of my show is changing. I'm talking a lot more about solar flares. I'm talking a lot more about what's going on in Portland. And I'm personally no longer experiencing stability with roommates. I'm dealing with a lot more personalities that just don't like me for me. So even though I'm able to pay the rent, my life is seeming far more unstable because I am moving from place to place within the city of Portland. And constantly in my life, there's struggle, there's strife, there's losing of my job. And that economic stability, uh, I saw the hot go from cold, you can say, so to speak, in the 2009, 10, 11 time period, and how some of the things that were attractive to women just earlier, all of a sudden my life had changed economically. Like I said, some of the content to be a little bit more spiritually leaning on the TV show and less just blaming the New World Order, which is mostly popular with conspiracy-leaning crowds, just blame and finger point, don't actually deal with what's going on with relationships, men, women, the whole thing. Don't offend, Alex. Don't rock the boat. I kept digging. I kept poking that beast within us all. 
and more so when I came back to Portland, I'm talking about Portland's social ills, human trafficking, homelessness, gender warfare, classism, all that more in a bag of kettle chips. And you can imagine the type of reaction I was feeling from the Portland audience. No longer Alex going against the man, it's Alex is trying to expose the shit of our society. Fuck you, asshole. Do as thou wilt. So, it's important that you understand my experience and how I have come to some of these conclusions. As soon as I kind of went all the way with what I really feel about what's going on, and I adapted the uh, living mobily, either in a vehicle, off the grid in the air, living in a tiny home on wheels, a homemade teardrop camper in Portland, or the RV thing, going from living in a conventional structure in a conventional city to living mobily. If you're still looking for love in all the wrong places, you're in a world of hurt. As for you YouTube commenters, keyboard philosophers, comments on YouTube are one thing. And people saying, hey, we like what you're doing from the internet world is one thing. We can't imagine what you're talking about, Alex. It's just strange to us. I'm here in Florida and I think you're great. Fine. That's fine. That has nothing to do with how things really are. Like brass tacks, like when it comes down to the real world where you can actually walk by society. People like that don't respect and in fact are concerned really about people like me and their communities like changing things and affecting the matrix. Like what's that black magic? Man, you're fucking crazy. Archon who? <laughs> no, folks, get with it. I'm trying to help you here. Society is not accepting of people like me. So the last few years I've been dealt with, as you know, a, a fair amount of rejection from mainstream society, even the off-grid community. Uh, women have shown themselves to be pretty much the same everywhere, locked up with fear, especially of outsiders. People that they don't know, whether it's, you know, uh, who knows what the reaction is. That's a deeper level of speculation that we can't necessarily know, but we know what's happening. It's happening more to some of us than others. And it could really be our energy and what we're really all about. And the fact that we're on this fallen world. We're in Satan's kingdom, if you will. And when we want to hang out in some of his dense population centers, the people that his daughters, his sons, man, they're going to look at us like, you don't belong here within our world. This is our world now. Your kind, your light, your vibration, your frequency, this is our world. You are the one that needs to get out. Again, it's the reverse of what the mainstream New Agers were saying years ago about this age of enlightenment and acceptance and psychic awareness and there'll be no more lies because we'll all be telepathic and in the fourth dimension. We've seen the shift in consciousness and I am not the only one to say that these are the most unromantic times. I may be, but I'm not the only one to see it. Uh, these, are, these are extremely divisive times. And even within conspiracy, knowledge, research, there's a lot of gross ignorance as to what's really going on and whether they're winning or losing. And a lot of people are just telling themselves and telling others uh, what themselves and others want to hear and just going around chasing their tail because that's preferable to the truth. You know, the almost intoxication of pleasure from the dizziness of chasing one's tail is preferable from reality actually sitting in and showing us where society really, really is. So for my own society, sanity in a society such as this, to be solution-oriented, not problem-focused, I need to be in a place where I like my environment. When I go to town, the strategies, and I'll talk about this in video because I have to coexist with this in society, I have to go to town for supplies strategies for all of us, be you male or female, dealing with men or women, how to mindfully deal with this mass mind control virus that wants to look down upon those that are almost vibrating with a certain light that the vampires are blinded by. How do we go along to get along within that society if you're living in that society? For those of us that prefer to live outside that society and drive in once every few days, put up our shields and put up a positive energy and, and even see ourselves 
impacting in a positive way that Walmart, that supermarket, that bank, that place that we're going to, that gas station with with loving energy, with higher knowledge and wisdom, a light of wisdom and understanding and empathy pouring into that time space physical reality, those particular GPS coordinates, we can impact our matrix. I think my own travels have shown me that I am impacting these places. I'm absorbing energy, they're impacting me. I'm outputting energy, I'm impacting those environments. I am transmitting and receiving and right now i've come into one of the most beautiful forests well thank you god working rv working solar i have all the food that i need i have all the water that i need at least for a week and i'm going to hone my ability to go into town to the best of my ability less than once a week i'm going to upload all my videos at once i'll schedule them out day by day so you don't get them all at once and so over a few years of adapting to this way of life, seeing how some people treat me in society and seeing some of the hateful comments and obsessive viewers that are watch this channel obsessively hoping to see me slip and fall on a banana peel, it's really encouraged me to actually keep going, keep putting out these videos, uh, keep promoting the off-the-grid lifestyle, and now connecting the dots with how a man going his own way on the spiritual path who doesn't want to participate in the gender warfare, who wants to connect with his higher self and connect deeper with nature. And, and stepping back from wanting to have sex with the zombie women just because his body says yes, his higher consciousness says no. We can be infected by the energies of some of the people that we bed down with. And in hindsight, when I was having the most sex with women that I didn't know in that 2008, nine, we can even say seven, and 10 time period uh, without a doubt now there was a reason why some of those women were all of a sudden attracted to my energy to come into my field for that one night and why it was really about lust and no real connection with me as a human being what else was really going on behind the scenes that I could potentially look at other than it just being uh, a case study of lust gone away without love it's almost as if they were sent in to drain my energy and I can feel in a couple of sent in, as in, on a dark spiritual side, what they think they're attracted to, on a dark Cupid side, working both myself and them, paired up with certain individuals that are there playing host to something else that wants to get a... Like some out of Ghostbusters with a little fucking transmitter. Oh, we've got one here. So they actually get a readout on your energy, tap into your energy to pull... From your energy and again it can be done non-sexually if someone gets your attention and they feel motivated to get your attention to direct your attention towards them I mean this video could go on for for a while in Portland there are certain women they will wear the short short skirts folks that's that when you're dealing with the whole society that's throwing why well, wants you to look at me and give you give me your energy but I'm gonna glare at you if you look or if I don't like the person that's looking back at me, or something to that effect, or someone advertising what they're not selling is another way that I've put it in Portland. This is psychic vampirism when you're throwing mixed signals. So as a male, even if you're on the spiritual path, and especially if you're healthy, and if you have a lot of energy, sexual energy is very potent, and when entities can direct us to channel our sexual energy, towards them or um, someone that they're parasiting on, a host for example, and we have a very powerful energy, uh, it almost seems to have a higher dollar or value to those parasites. And it's not just sexual, it's fear. They keep us afraid, in pain. Oh, if we're a very powerful being and we're very, very capable, then we're stuck in, oh. We're, we're literally, and we're, we're chain smoking because I've lived this, and I've, I've been parasited on, and I am a powerful being, so I know exactly what I'm talking about, because I'm working to overcome it, I'm working to overcome smoking long term, and I haven't overcome smoking long term, and I'm honest with myself, I'm not a slave to my own ego, I, I realize that that's another way we leave the doors open, to being fed on energetically, 
to having a lower, it's like the smoker's cloud. I understand what that is, and I call bullshit on other smokers of either the green or the nicotine. That these things are there to mask emotions and feelings for the most part that we should be dealing with. But it's progress, not perfection. So I've been struggling with a nicotine addiction for some time. And you look at a lot of these men that are stuck in their vices and they're at the strip club and they're drinking and they're addicted to the video games and the pornography and the strip clubs. And having actually embedded myself in the strip club, strip club I can almost barely say it, strip club scene, not too deep, but maybe going once every few weeks in Portland during that period in which my energy was being vampired on. It was me seeking that connection even through the eye contact made with the dancer. And again, searching for love and connection with another human being in all the wrong places. Here I am. What do you think you're Jesus? Do you think you're going to spread love and light in a strip club in some cases there were some very amazing conversations that i had but of course i was wasting my time in those places during those years in which i was trying to awaken the portland feminine i mean what a fucking laughing stock of a fucking goal in life that was uh but it was real there was a time where i was truly trying to connect with the portland feminine and find the Portland feminine expression of it that can also see the light. Where I could see the strength in her, the insusceptible in her. Never found it. Never found it. And I'm not so sure it exists. You know, as far as the rest of the, uh, the lifetime, you know, um, I do feel I'm going to meet someone much later in life, perhaps. Or maybe not at all in this lifetime. This lifetime also, I could be paying out a penis, including my travels and uh, other things for the things that I may have done in other lifetimes. Also, dark forces obviously are at work within this lifetime to punish me for the good deeds that I've done within this lifetime, as well as the things that I'm capable of, i.e. the things that I have yet to create and the things that I have yet to produce. And so, for myself, in this particular bodysuit, this particular consciousness, the type of content on my channel, it makes sense for a man like Alex answering to be living in exile, to be reporting from an undisclosed location in southwest Colorado. However, you can be a male and have full empathy for what I'm saying and not be on YouTube. And uh, not be any radio show minority again, just a white guy or a black guy or an Hispanic guy, religious or not, who finds yourself at odds with mainstream society. And you found things enormously complicated with the opposite sex and you would rather not be distracted and told that your number one goal in life is to mate like a monkey, to chase women like some sort of a horn dog. Uh, you may want to rise above that and be in your own power to be able to meditate for days on end and if so be it, live off the power of the sun. Live off the power of your breath to be disconnected from the internet and all this bullshit news and to have the answers within your own consciousness at the very least to silence the noise within your mind. Tap in and absorb the nature, the energy around you that you happen to be drawn to. And that's also a part of this process. To know what coordinate of nature is calling you at this moment in time. It isn't just going out in nature to this place or commune or community, intentional community, because somebody else says so. It should be your own manifestation. I found Costilla County because I put out the intention to find a place where I can achieve and feel a sense of inner silence and peace and wisdom. My short sightedness was realizing that that was only for a period in time for me to experience in Costilla, 2012 to 2013. 
my short-sightedness was thinking that, that I would have that experience twice or three times. And that the sec second or third time would be a time of peace. We have to follow our hearts. We have to know what's right for us and develop those abilities. And understand that there are certain times and places for us to have an experience. And not all experiences that are perceived to be negative are without their merit. What I learned in Costilla County the second time and those negative experiences, ultimately it was a positive thing. Otherwise I want to be here now, here in Southwest Colorado. I would be down there chasing my tail trying to hold up Costia County just like I tried to hold up Portland, Oregon to gain the love of Costia County like I wanted to gain the love of Portland. And as I wanted a Portland woman to actually love me for who I was, I wanted a community of Costia County to love me for who I really was and Heaven forbid, maybe even meet someone in that general area in which our energies are drawn together. And what I found out was you can leave Portland. <laughs> you can leave the urban city and you can go out off the grid and you can do something for other people. And they can look at you like you're a bum. And yet you're going out to an off-the-grid area where people do those kinds of things for years. Live off water hauled in from the store. And food bought from the store in an RV or an unconventional structure. Surviving harsh winter and summer temperatures. And other harsh elements of the environment, including the people. Having survived that, I want the t-shirt, I survived Costilla County. Now I can see more than ever the need for me to completely be independent of other men and women. Not only independent of the need for a woman's love, I've also been going without family for a number of years. And any family member from either the, the male or female side of either the Ansaris or the Nagels. That would be the Germanic Austrian line on my mother's side, okay? There's a reason why there is no loving divine, feminine or masculine, from either side of the family that contacts me for any reason at any time. Uh, there's a reason why I've learned how to survive, why I've had to go my own way and be completely independent and to be able to survive emotionally without love at all. Eternal family love as well as a real genuine first relationship that maybe goes on for a few years that's based in, let's do this. I've never been in that type of a relationship. You know, people don't have to be married for it to be a situation where, okay, it's, it's boyfriend, girlfriend, but you're not just screwing other people. You're actually in a relationship and you're working towards a common goal because you both agree to agree that you're going to do this. It's like, you know, I want to start singing some love-drenched song from the 70s. But, you know, there is an era of music that is not a part of my generation. It is the romance era uh, that those that came before us did get a chance to have. There was a time in pop culture where love was promoted and it wasn't about being someone's hoe and it wasn't about domestic violence and it wasn't about control and it wasn't necessarily about codependency although there was a little bit of that thrown in it was about genuine love and I don't know how many of you have actually realized that but there was a period in time where that was promoted in our society and this is a society in time and day and age 
where they're not promoting that and they're promoting gender confusion and they're promoting living in the grid and they're promoting the cashless society and they're promoting wars without end and they're promoting GMOs okay and they're promoting the transgender bathroom okay and they're promoting all types of you know fiat reserve currency systems you know and they're promoting these unnatural lights and us working in buildings and not getting enough sun they're promoting fear of the sun they're promoting getting skin cancer by putting the stupid lotion on your body instead of just getting some coconut oil. You know, and they're promoting chemotherapy, and they're promoting McDonald's, and they're promoting hormones in the milk of the things that are causing the women to get the breasts at the younger age. And they're, they're causing the, the boys to actually come up less produced, to not be producing the same amount of testosterone. Uh, they were, uh, you know, producing naturally 20, 30 years ago. So take this drug, take steroids, play more video games, pretend to be a man in this virtual reality, pretend to be a woman in this virtual reality. Here's Facebook. Here, now you can like each other. You can be angry at each other. You can have a heart for each other. Here's a new icon. How about you can just fuck each other? Like, boom, I just fucked you on Facebook. Yeah, like a symbol from... I just gave you a blowjob, a cyber blowjob. And so they're like, oh my God, I just got a cyber blowjob from this person. Like, oh my God. Enter the headset, the next frontier of man and woman to come. Don't tell me this is a natural way to live. Don't tell me it's strange to say this is the most unromantic time to be alive. Listen, I've got 2.8 million views on this channel. And nearly all of the women that have contacted me that I have actually connected with have come in on some level to sabotage some shit. That have come in some, with some deep-seated psychological problem that somehow they thought that there's a spiritual contract between us for me to heal them of their insanity, their schizophrenia. They may have come in as a pretty woman to pull in my sexuality and, and draw only for, for me to realize that there was some energy harvesting going on to toy with my emotions and create attraction and then heartbreak or other issues. Again, when I was having more of the sexual encounters that I only went into by meeting some people on the internet trying to find a woman that liked me for me. Of course, they always claim that until you realize, wow, there sure is a lot of pattern with a lot of these people on antidepressants and psychotropic medications. There sure are a number of issues uh, regarding uh, certain issues like that and other disturbances that I was not in a position to heal. And so I can testify that here I am at the age of 36, not too bad looking, somewhat intelligent, physically healthy and off-grid goals. A lot of the people actually have been attracted to me, that have contacted me, have been dangerous for me. Uh, and... Uh, there are a number of stories I can share about some people that have come and visited uh, from other places. Uh, and some of these stories go back to Portland and how we can see a, a theme there. And what I'm hoping is I want to persevere and become the man that I'm truly meant to be and that I'm going to become. And then it's then, perhaps only then, that this... Uh, person that I feel I meant to meet within this lifetime, hopefully, is going to happen. But right now, up until this point, uh, I've actually seen a lot of things that have greatly disturbed me and shown me how easily a man could be sabotaged by outside forces, by targeting him where he's weak, where he's needy, where he's lustful and so there is a connection as I close here between the monk's path the man going his own way but not just being another I'm gonna watch sandbag and analyze women like they're some sort of alien creature okay it takes both a male and a female to create both a male and a female I say this to all the women that hate men, Th those men came from women. Those men came from vagina. And all women came from a dude's penis coming. A woman came from that. Do you realize that? 
Yes, it takes sperm and an egg to create a man and a woman. There are aspects of our fucking humanity that's coming out of both men and women, coming out through the duality in this world of night and day. Just see the illusion of separation for what it is, but see the common source of all that is. Beyond the male-female night-day, beyond the yin-yang, is the whole. We're connected in a lot of ways, karmically and other, that a lot of people don't understand in this current incarnation and lifetime. Therefore, it is important for people to understand why they abstain, truly. Not to punish themselves. Uh, not because God may be holding a thunderbolt waiting to sodomize them once they take that blow job. That, that's not what it's really about, in my opinion. What it's really about is developing your character to the highest possible level. And in certain times and periods in which it's going opposite of romance and it's going pro-lust and pro-gender warfare. Some of us that have the luck to be incarnated at certain age of procreation and sexual peak, some of us just got the good luck to come in at a certain age where it's just like, civil fucking war, are you kidding me? Some people listening to the fucking garbage music on the air without realizing, like, that is just toxic to save our sanity and to evolve as souls you know there's a reason why off-grid living is synonymous with that living in nature living outside the cities you know not co-signing the behavior of other human beings they're living their lives as slaves allowing society to reject us and going through that experience and healing from that experience which may go on a few years until we heal from that experience and then become an even greater person once they, we overcome the trauma of societal rejection. Which, of course, you've noticed me struggle with, especially since Costilla County. Now that Costilla County is behind me forever, dun dun dun, uh, now it's time to actually grow. And, and really spread my wings and fly. Commentary like this, you know, the connection between MGTOW and men going their own way and, and the off-grid movement that's growing in this country and why good men are leaving mainstream society and, and why this has consequences for women's safety in urban environments as more men that choose to stay along and play the game, that they become more archonically infected by society. I feel like it is my role to continue to share this message. Now, if you support my work, you can visit alexchantry.tv and become a monthly contributor. Or, you can make a donation of any amount over at PayPal. Just enter my email, alex underscore answery at hotmail.com. Hopefully, I've shed some additional light on the connection between the off-grid movement and um, a man on the spiritual path. Beyond just men going their own way, but, you know, men actually trying to become the best that they can be. And that includes connecting with their true self, their higher self. Alex Answer here, sign off from Southwest Colorado, May 27th, 2016.